Hello everyone, this is step 3 in building your rainwater harvesting system. In this video I'll discuss how I modified the gutters and I'll offer some suggestions when installing or modifying your gutters. First it is important to note that there were existing gutters on this structure. I will only be speaking about modifying existing gutters. However, if you don't have gutters on your structure and will be installing new gutters, you can use these same ideas and concepts that I will discuss about modifying existing gutters. It's all pretty simple. Basically, we want to direct our rainwater to a desired location. In my case, I want to direct all my rainwater to flow here, to my holding tanks. From my experience, when gutters are installed in a common residential home, they are sloped in a specific way. Each gutter run has a highest point, that point being in the middle of the gutter run. This is done to direct the water left and right to the downspouts and shed water from the roof. Here's exactly what I mean. This gutter run is 22 feet in length. In the center of the run, at 11 feet, is its highest point. The bottom of the gutter sits three and a half inches away from this board. Eleven feet away at the downspout, the gutter as it is, is at its lowest point. The bottom of the gutter sits only two and a half inches away from the bottom of the same board. This results in a downward slope of an inch. If you were to look closely at the gutters from a few yards or meters away, they would re it would resemble a slight frown or sad face. This method of sloping the gutters works great for shedding water off the roof. Unfortunately for rainwater harvesting, this causes us more work. One option we have is to simply re-slope all the gutters downwards at an eighth to a quarter inch per foot to our desired location. While this would work great, it's obvious that after 30 or 40 feet, you would begin to run out of board room to fasten your gutters to. We just watched uh, how we lost an inch of board room in 11 feet. This would work great if you had around 50 feet, 50 total feet of gutter. For some, this option of sloping all your gutters will work great. You may be using a small barn, garage, or carport where you have a short gutter run and can slope it directly to the tank. For many others, including myself, we cannot do just that. Generally speaking, structures with gutter runs over 50 feet cannot continue to just slope the gutters downwards. We would simply run out of room to fasten the gutters to. So what do we do? There are many options depending on your situation. Uh, what's important though is to know that this is not the only way, but it's simply one way. First, let's identify all the downspouts. There are three total. The most obvious is the downspout feeding the tanks. The second is a modified downspout that connects to the first flush diverter. And the third is the downspout the farthest away from the holding tanks. I have not modified it at all yet. Back to this first downspout. First I move the downspout from this side of the house to the other side of the house. I did this for a cleaner fit and an easier connection. To do this, I remove the downspout, then I remove the small metal adapter that the downspout connects to. I use part of the downspout that I just removed to make a cover for that hole. I use some tin snips to cut a rectangle piece that fits over the hole. From there, I clean and dry the gutter to prepare it for caulk. I use caulk to fasten the new cover to the gutter. I also place a small weight on the cover to hold it in place while it dries. To answer the new downspout, I use a screw gun and a drill bit to punch a hole through the gutter. From there I could fit a sawzall blade in the gutter and I used it to cut the rest of the hole out. This tool is probably not the best tool to use, but it's the only tool I had that could do the job. Once my hole was completed, I used the same metal adapter that I removed earlier for the new hole. Again, I cleaned and dried the surface to prepare it for caulk, then caulked the adapter into place. I then placed a small weight on it while it dried. 
Now you need an adapter to convert your plumbing. The adapter I'm using is 3 inches by 4 inches on one side and 3 inches round on the bottom side. Here is a good rule of thumb and a helpful tool to determine how much water your adapter can flow. You'll want to do this before purchasing any adapter. To do this you'll calculate in square inches the surface area of your adapter's opening. You will then take that number and multiply it by 100. This number is the maximum amount of catchment area that your adapter can flow. Using my adapter as an example, the opening is 3 inches by 4 inches. Multiplying that together will give me a surface area of 12 square inches. I'll then take that number and multiply it by 100, which will give me 1200. 1200 is the maximum catchment area that this adapter can flow. 1200 is, stands for 1200 square feet. So this one adapter is good for 1200 square feet of roof or catchment area. The second downspout is the middle downspout. First I'll show you how I modified it, then I'll explain why. Like the adapter you saw earlier, I used the same 3x4 adapter here and connected, it to, and connected it to 3 inch PVC pipe. The pipe is approximately 22 feet long and is angled at a downward slope aimed at the first flush diverter. The unpainted portion is the new modified part. I use basic 3 inch PVC fittings and adapters to connect all this together. I didn't have a plan for this part, it was basically like a puzzle. With the new pipe installed, it more than doubled the amount of rainwater collected. Holding the pipe up is a metal strap, commonly known as steel plumber strap. There's a total of five straps, each placed three to four feet apart. Each strap re received at least two screws to fasten it to the wood. There's at least one thing left to do here, that is to paint the PVC pipes. Over time, the pipe can become brittle from continuous exposure to the sun. Adding the second water location brings us 22 feet closer to the far side of the house. This will allow me to slope the gutters on this side of the house to flow towards the new water collection location. I could not slope all the gutters on, on the house in this way. I would simply run out of boardroom to fasten the gutters to. Only because I added the second water location is this now an option. This side of the house has less than 50 total feet of gutter. I plan to, if I need more water, to slope all these gutters to flow to the second water location. However, as it stands, I collect more than enough water. The third downspout I have not modified. I have a feeling if and when I slope these gutters to flow towards the second water location, that I will not need to remove this downspout or cover the hole. I believe that sloping the gutters here would direct nearly all water away from this gutter. Because of that, I don't plan on removing this downspout. One last thing. This may be something that will save you a lot of time and work in the future. Gutter guard or leaf guard. If you have trees or commonly get an accumulation of debris in your gutters, this is a must. I do have a few recommendations. First, I would not do what I did and purchase uh, your gutter guard from Lowe's or Home Depot. I spoke with a few local gutter companies and they have industrial grade aluminum gutter guard. They also fasten the guards to the gutters with screws, which is very helpful. I noticed after about four months a few of my guards have shifted. This would not have happened if I would have fastened them to the gutters. This is an option I may look at for the future. Overall, the guards I have, I would rate a 7 out of 10, and I plan to keep them. They are easy to locate, they do the job, and they are easy to install. However, what I dislike is the material and the color of the guards. If you're watching this, give your local gutter guy a call first. Most likely, they will have a few options, better quality, and as well as a larger color selection. Thanks for watching. Update. After making this video, I've made a few more changes to the gutters. First, I've re-sloped the gutters at a more aggressive downward slope for better water flow. The most extreme slope is this gutter run. I've dropped this run of gutter to be flush with the board it fastens to. 
This allows me to lower the gutters on the rest of the house as well. At my second water location, I was able to slope most, most of the remaining gutters to flow here. The only part of the roof that does not flow towards any water collection location is the section with the gutter guard. After having the opportunity to watch it rain, I noticed that the gutter guard allows some of the rain to drip off. I still like the guards where I have a constant danger of debris, but other than that, I have decided to remove all gutter guards except for this small portion. Once a week, I spray out the gutters to keep them clean. Most of what's in the gutters is just small pebbles from the roof shingles. Uh, I don't have much leaves because I don't have many trees around uh, my roof. So I've just opted to take them off. It's much easier to clean them. Thanks for watching and comment with any questions.